Welcome to the IVM Podcast Network. Hi, this is Amit Doshi, and I wanted to thank each and every one of our listeners. It's been two years since I founded IVM, and it's been an amazing two years. We wanted to learn a little bit more about who is listening to our shows, and so we put together a short survey. The survey is anonymous, and we aren't going to be collecting any personal information. I would really appreciate it if you could take a couple of minutes out of your day and go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and fill it out. Thanks, and please keep listening. You're listening to The Podcast, presented by The Daily Pal. This is Pranuti, Amit, and Purva, and we're from the dailypow.com, a Bombay-specific food and culture website, and this is our weekly podcast, The Powdcast. Now, in this episode, we're going to be talking about the city's Iranian connection, and um, this is an episode of Metro Station, in which we uh, talk about city history and news. So stay tuned for Metro Station. Metro Station. Today on Metro Station, we're going to be talking about the city's Iranian connection. And the reason we're talking about this is because it was Navroz last week. And Pran, you celebrated it by going and buying some baklava. Yeah, this is uh, something I'd been meaning to do for a long time. You know, every year around Navroz, which uh, Jamshedi Navroz, which takes place on March 20th and 21st, uh, this one place in Bhendi Bazaar called Iranian Sweets Palace, it opens for two weeks around okay. Navroz. Um, and it's run by this guy called Haji Muhammad Hassan Hajati. And the shop has been around, or the business has been around since 1909. And every year the papers carry a story about Iranian Sweets Palace. And it's one of these Bombay things that I hadn't done and I felt I should do, which is why mm-hmm. I made the trip this time. Sounds like a pop-up before pop-ups were invented. Yeah, it kind of is a pop-up, <laughs> except that, you know, they own that space. So he opens the shop a month in advance. Mm-hmm. He spends one week prepping, one week um, cooking the sweets, and okay. two weeks selling the stuff. And he's famous for baklava, uh-huh. uh, which is, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of baklava, to be honest. It's I super went, rich. It is very rich. Is, I mean, is I, it from Iran or is it, you know, where? From that region. Okay. You know, yeah. Turkey, Iran. Uh, but uh-huh. he has just become synonymous with Turkey for some yeah. reason. Yeah, but, but, but his baklava is quite different from Turkish baklava, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. So, he, he doesn't have uh, those layers, the fine filo. layers of filo pastry. Right. He's got a biscuit-like, uh, quite a stiff upper layer. Okay. Uh, and the filling is quite yum. Um, like in Turkish baklava, you know, the nuts are sort of separate. Mm-hmm. You know, it, the texture is quite crunchy. They're coarser because they, they're like uh, bigger pieces. Of exactly, nuts exactly. Yeah. But he <laughs> cooks the nuts uh, to a halwa-like consistency. So it's quite pasty. I see. So but is it more like mitai or like pretty Yeah, much. it is. It yeah. is. But very, very nutty. You know, like okay. he doesn't skimp on the mm-hmm. badam. Okay. You know, so it really tastes like one of those winter sweets right. that you have to keep yourself warm. And does he cook them in ghee? Is that what they use to bind? I'm not sure what uh, grease he uses, right. but he uses honey to sweeten it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not that that makes it any less fatty. It tastes pretty fatty. And can you buy it like by the piece or is it just by no, the so kilo? No, so you have or? to buy it by the kilo. So it's 1400 bucks per kilo okay. and you have to buy a minimum of half a kilo. But within that half kilo, you can buy his other stuff as well. So you can okay. buy a bit of baklava. And he also makes three varieties of a sweet called loose. Okay. Yeah, so he makes... How do you spell that? L O U S E. So he makes a loose pista, a loose badam, I and see. a loose zafran, which is saffron. Okay. And he also sells dry fruit, mm-hmm. like Irani dry mm-hmm. fruit. And he sells um, certain ingredients that are used in Iranian food, like, you know, the berries of berry pulao. The Zareshk berry. Zareshk berries, those right. tart berries that you get in mm-hmm. uh, Britannia and their berry pulao. Then he sells these limes called limu omani, which again is used in um, Irani food. He sells something called kashk. Mm-hmm. And these are uh, little balls of camel milk. Oh. And um, a ball of camel milk. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. it's sweet or something. I'm not sure how it tastes actually. Okay. I haven't had it. Interesting. And Maybe something that deserves a piece. Yeah, itself, but yeah. only only for these two weeks. I so see. the shop okay. is open till March thirty first. So he imports all of this stuff. Yeah, from okay. from Iran. What and is the sweet palace throughout the year and the rest of the year? 
it's not it's close throughout the rest I of see, the year okay. because he he used to be a stock broker and he still dabbles in stock and is now in the construction and he business. also has a little construction <laughs> right. business okay uh, but this is a family tradition that uh, that he's carried forward okay so i called mr hajati this morning to check whether all these ingredients uh, that are used in iranian food whether they're available and he said that the berries are in stock and you can buy them till the end of this month okay. uh, but the limes are not okay. and the other thing that's not in stock is something called rabe anar which is a pomegranate puree that's oh, used nice. in their food yeah right. but he usually has it but you know it's he doesn't have it this time um but you know on that very street uh, mm. on which iranian sweet palace is um it's called imamwada road um you have two other sort of irani sites one is mughal masjid which is a lovely piece of architecture very blue it's blue yeah it's got this uh, lovely blue mosaic mm. tiling and it really looks like a piece of persia smack in the middle of bhindi bazaar because it's this gorgeous blue color yeah and um it doesn't have a dome apparently this is an architectural feature of uh, you know some mm. persian masjid architecture there's no dome but it has minarets and it has this lovely arched doorway um so that's quite that's quite a sight to see mm. in bhindi bazaar in which sort of the tones are brown and green yeah. and you have this lovely yeah uh, it really stands out it really does um, stand out but it's like a mosque right so can you enter you it? can't you enter, can't enter, you, enter, can't enter right? you can just appreciate it from outside yeah. and right next to that is the irani hamam mm-hmm. which uh, i don't know if people will want to enter it well i have entered it but i haven't actually <laughs> yeah. gone inside because it's a irani bath right, right isn't that yeah. what it is so i mean it's called a turkish bath, bath yeah i mean these hamams are called turkish baths yeah. but it's called the irani hamam yeah so basically you're supposed to go there to your own bar of soap <laughs> when you oh, start really to, so it's still in there. use Yeah. It is still in use but, but I don't but very few people actually go there and, no, and it's firstly, decrepit. No, it's quite decrepit. It's very grotty and there's a sign right inside that says it's actually only Muslims are allowed to use it okay. and there's another sign that says heart patients should not uh, sort of uh, Why? Because But it's because the these, they give you a massage. They give you a massage <laughs> and they give you they really scrub you down apparently and I think that you know this is one of those things that only journalists have gone and experienced apart from the people that actually use it like I mean the rest of the people who actually don't live in that area don't really go and visit it right but because it's just like a thing to write about i've seen so many pieces in different publications talking about this whole experience of how they really sort of that um, this crab you down supposed massage is really quite uh, aggressive quite vigorous. aggressive and well yeah i've been to a hammam so i know how aggressive they can get because yeah. for them you're just like a piece of meat or like <laughs> one number out of the thousands that they bathe in a yeah. day yeah except yeah. that uh, hardly anyone goes to this, this uh, one yeah. so it's really a curiosity more than anything right. else but it still exists yeah so i i remember i went there and i went there with a photographer and i think they obviously figured that you know we were sort of tourist so they didn't allow us to enter but i think you can go people male listeners who are really interested in experiencing this can go there pretend that you know they're like be all cash about it and act like they've got been there a hundred times and right. get a scrub well i mean again the other uh, big irani connection is of course the irani cafe and we're mm. not going to talk too much about that because i mean everyone knows what the irani cafe is but um, i think we're talking about how like they're sort of synonymously called Ir- Irani and Parsi cafes, but the fact is that there is a difference between Irani and Parsi, and also the food is quite different. Right. So you know, most Irani cafes are run by. Well, I, I don't want to say most because I don't have a grip on the numbers, but a large number of them are run by Zoroastrian Iranis. Mm-hmm. And how they're different from the Parsis is that they migrated to India much later, around the 19th century. Mm-hmm. A lot of these Irani cafes are also run by Muslim Iranis, yeah. who serve. Parsi food like Kular and Company yeah. Matunga for example it's run by a pair of brothers called Amir and Ali Kular but they they serve you know your khima pao and uh, all kinds Ooh, of parsi food yeah, yeah. right but a couple of irani cafes mm-hmm. do serve iranian food one of them is cafe universal well, select dishes select dishes yeah yeah, yeah like two dishes yeah. so universal <laughs> for example which is in fort mm-hmm. and is a lovely place it's owned by zoroastrian iranis who migrated pretty late like in the 1980s mm-hmm. so there it's the dhemiri family and i remember talking to them and um so mr dhemiri 
a married in a parsi woman this woman called treaty his wife is called treaty okay. she grew up in bombay hmm. then she migrated to iran and lived over there for some time and then okay. they all migrated back to bombay she really liked it in iran she she said it was very clean <laughs> and so they iran universal and they offered two items which are iranian hmm. like one is called gourmet sabzi which is sort of a stew mm-hmm. with greens and these limes that i mentioned right. as well as some meat and another item is called game badinjan which is um, a brinjal in tomato sauce and okay. also meat right. they also serve veg yeah. items a the, veg versions of these but i'm imagining that there may be also quite a few meat dishes right that be well the city has chalo kebab and right. juje so, kebab and you get that in in a few places yeah so piccadilly right in on kolaba causeway yeah. has an irani section right and so they serve chalo kebabs yeah. in fact copper chicken juje kebab been serving it for a while for a while and also indian uh, summer used to serve it santur which, right famously at uh, kaf parade used to serve chelo kebabs yeah. and everyone loved it but i mean i thought they were overrated even khyber does it santur yeah. is not um, vegetarian santur santur no and uh, dug do you get dug here because that's something very popular at shisha cafe in pune i haven't in Puna, i haven't which is seen like, it's, it's sort of their like equivalent this, of a lassi, lassi of a right? salted yeah. lassi yeah. actually a uh, chaas you could mm-hmm. say but it's nice it's a uh, thicker creamier it's a fantastic drink i think i go to shisha cafe just for the dug but they do a lot of these um, juje kebabs and all of that mm-hmm. as well what i've noticed is that it's um, it's like a basically uh, meat prepared as a kebab right. and uh, rice so it's quite dry a lot right. of their preparations there's yeah. not much sauce in right uh, if, even the berry pulao if you see it's like their equivalent of a biryani right but there's yeah. not necessarily an accompanying gravy with the with the dish right right so that's interesting yeah So that's it for this week. Remember that Iranian Sweets Palace in Bhindi Bazaar is open till March 31st, so you have a few days to buy baklava and other Iranian sweets. And we've also done a post on on the sweet shop on the dailypower.com, so do check that out. We'll see you next week. For more on what's happening in the city, read the dailypower.com. Also subscribe to our newsletter on the website. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram where the Daily Pow and you can find this podcast on the Indus Vox Media SoundCloud page as well as iTunes, Stitcher and TuneIn. If you like listening to the podcast check out Simplified with Chuck and Narain it's a podcast that explains burning issues that you should know to make you appear smarter check it out on ivmpodcast.com Hey man just help me out man i need some i need some podcast man i haven't had a fix in a week just need some Don't you worry about it i got podcast galore for you man just go to ivmpodcast.com you can also find us on facebook twitter and instagram Thanks man. I'm going to check it out.